Hello everyone, dear participants in module eight. This is lesson number one in the warm up. Yeah, we're just warming up. We're warming up for the real thing, which is starting on the 26th. And lesson number one is artificial intelligence, definition and types. Today is a Monday, February the 5th. And uh, apparently we have in uh, 21 more days, 21 more days uh to go so what are we going to be warming up in this lesson we're going to be operationally defining ai in the course and then we look at types of ai or uh, simply treated talking about simply treated this course is not to make you responsible is to just give you the idea fundamentals so that when you're hearing about ai you will not appear ignorant and that takes me to a mail we got from one of the uh, one of our great participants and he said we should be taught as if we are nursery school children especially when applying or introducing new knowledge please that's what we want to do you know when you enroll in the military there's what is known as the boot camp boot camp is just to teach you the fundamentals not to train you to be specialist and i was reminded that uh in 1973 june after i left university of Ibado, we were, i was posted we were the first set of nyc posted to the midwest and this was a boot camp the aochi aochi camp and uh, oh 1973 that's 51 years ago ah praise god i have to thank god for for keeping me and so what we did hey attention by number parade with marching review order by the center Quick match, and the rest of them. Of course, I was a squad a parade commander, and uh, you can see some of us went into some little uh, specialization. And uh, so, why am I saying this? To let you know that it just boot camp, nothing to make you the specialist. So, we'll treat you as if you are nursery school students only by way of the knowledge that we think you have. So, let's look at the definition of artificial intelligence. We asked you to provide some definitions. And we had, wait for it, 1,675 definitions. All very impressive. And we asked you not to look at any, not to look at any book. Just do it. And we let, let me show you what we what we ended up uh, harvesting. We shared this with you before. You can see all oh, very beautiful. Uh, accurate uh, definitions uh, you can see we have 64 pages of these definitions everybody contributed uh, some what I can call oversee labels we just asked for something simple uh, they went on with uh, big big uh, grammar there but everything I, well, I looked at it and I found that all everybody who submitted uh, the definitions were accurate correct correct but let, let's see uh, what we can regard as some elements, some pillars of uh, a definition of artificial intelligence. Uh, and I've labeled these uh, features of a good definition of artificial intelligence. The uh, words that I've highlighted in yellow are the ones that, are what I can call the pillars that you need to have. Not necessarily having all of them, but some of these. Artificial intelligence, you can say it's a technology. You can say it's a process. You can say it's a product. And it involves machines. That is non-human entity. This has to be there. That's why it's artificial. And then it's not just there for fun. It has to perform some, some tasks, normally requiring human intelligence. And the other is that it should imitate or mimic human intelligence these are the features so if you see a definition of artificial intelligence uh then some of these words will have to be there for it to be properly scored or recognized so what are my operational definitions for the course two definitions and uh, you can see that these words in in yellow are uh, highlighted in yellow appearing a set of technologies that enables machines to mimic, mimic, copy, copy uh, human intelligence. The other is the process. 
of simulating human intelligence by machines, which enables them to perform human-like tasks. These are my two operational definitions, all deriving from uh, these uh, features. So let's uh, move on. How does AI work? What's under the bonnet? Within the make, where, where does it work? I'm sorry I'm bringing this, but this is not correct because you can't depict God as this. You see, human will not get any intelligence. Made from clay. I'm putting on my, my religious cap now. Uh, creation, divine creation. God created Adam and he breathed into him to get his soul working. In brain, begin to work. And it, the, the Adam person now transfers some of his knowledge and skills to this uh, in, in, uh, inanimate, you know, uh, inanimate uh, uh, entities that are not that are not human. So what we have done in turn, God breathed life into us, and then we are breathing life into inanimate objects. So what's under the bonnet? Like my friend, uh, where were you? I uh, will say, what did they make noise inside this gramophone? Let us see what's making noise inside this gramophone. What's all these things? Those people who are experts. There are many in this room, many in our course. There are minimum of uh, 15 professors of artificial intelligence and computer scientists, many in the course. But you see, don't let them think that they, we know these things. So. Inside this gramophone, what did they make noise there? So, the ABC of uh, how AI is set up. You know this course is ABC. ABC, that's not real. ABC. The technology itself, the computer, has no mind of its own. I recall when in UI 1970, 71, 72, we were analyzing our data, we go to the computer center, we write our programs, we take some punch cards, take to the computer. Make an error, just full stop in the syntax, or just uh, whatever error you make, it will bounce back to you. So it has no mind of its own. So like by training a dog or a cat, the human will train the artificial object on how to carry out the specific task. Now, what is important here is the knowledge base. You will keep giving the thing like a store, a knowledge base that will provide the artificial object some step-by-step -step procedure that step-by-step -step procedure is known as algorithm we'll be looking at this in the next lesson for which to solve problems uh now this one will make this this is not this is just a caricature of the human head this is there these are these are inanimate object artificial object that is now taught hey my friend uh let, let, let's take the practical one that we did the first thing we ask you to do uh, go to a blank page. Do the next one. Uh, set up your top level menu. Set the next one. Put your file name and the rest of them. So you can put all of this. Write the codes. Write in Python or whatever uh, language you want to use. You tell the computer. That's what the, the computer says. Ah, uh -huh. all right. So the computer will learn it. Now this results in the artificial object building up intelligence. Now this last bullet is important. Well, like the others. The more Artificial object has access to big data in the knowledge base. So you, you, you will keep dosing the uh, artificial object with, with uh, information. Okay, look, you did it like this the last time. Oh, you should have done it this way. This how. So the artificial object will continue to learn. And the better it is in solving problems. Now, the trick, the trick is for the trick for improving intelligence, for the improved intelligence of any artificial object you keep pumping data into its knowledge base and you keep providing more sophisticated step-by-step -step process for solving uh, the problem now let, let, let me take the case of uh, let, let's look at this first artificial intelligence so this is not a human person just inanimate objects in there and all of these are you write the program the software uh, do this yeah you give the done knowledge base for it don't worry about this might be grammar. We are going to put it to practice because this is a practical course. In another two or three lessons will be there. You see how this thing works. So machine learning, uh, text to speech, and the rest of them. Now, let, let, let me show you how, uh, give, give you an example. This is a practical one submission by my VC, a great vice, a great scholar, a great chemist, Professor Lufemi Peters. He didn't say that, oh, he's a big man. 
you cannot uh, learn. Learning how to learn, learning lifelong learning. That's what my VC Professor Peters uh, believes in. And uh, I'm not going to say much, but he's a great man. He has great heights to, 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 to climb. God will continue to take him to great heights. So he's a student here. And you can, he can tell the computer, okay, you look, step one, like I give to you. Step one, this is what you do. Step two, this is what you do. Step three, this is what you do. You can write this as a program and give to the computer. The computer will do it. And then if you, uh, you, you know, I talk about knowledge base, increasing the amount of information that you give to the computer, big data you can say, okay, you, you get so many of these images there. And it's okay, you can change the image to this and the computer will do it. Yeah, let's do uh, uh, some little, very simple demo. Speech to text and text to speech. Yeah, let's start with uh, speech to text. Now, this uh, Microsoft Word document, blank document, and uh, you all have this, by the way, if you have uh, some uh, not too uh, latest version of Microsoft Word. You can see dictate. I'm going to dictate something here. This computer, uh, okay, you, you okay, look at it. Dictate, uh, hello, Professor Olufemi Peters, Vice Chancellor, National Open University of Nigeria. Congratulations on your scoring. 250 in practical one all right so you see that i'm just dictating and it is typing how, how does it know this this is because we have a knowledge base where some of these words are put it's still going on <laughs> some of these words are put and the, the the thing will keep bring them up as i go along and you can train it you are talking about training increase knowledge base it has made some errors because of my voice, but over time, uh, you can, uh, when you train the uh, system, it will not make that error again. So if I'm dictating a letter or a speech, I can just go on like this, and that's how it does it. Hey, simple, ain't it? Oh, yes, but at the back end, you have quite a lot of information that uh, that will have stored in the in the knowledge base. Yeah, let's try some uh, read aloud. So you are busy doing something, you can ask uh, this thing to read for you. Let's see what happens. 1242 Musa Umar, Ahoji Federal University, dot Sema. Today the world is talking about artificial intelligence. If you make a programmer three times more effective, it's not just that they okay, can so do that's how three that, that's times how that, that, more that stuff. Uh, we have done speech to text. We have done text to speech. Let's look at the second part of this lesson, types of artificial intelligence. There are two main broad classifications. One in which you classify the artificial intelligence based on capabilities. And the other based on functionalities. So, for based on capabilities, you have three of them: narrow artificial intelligence, general artificial intelligence, and super artificial intelligence. For the functionalities classification, you have reactive machine, limited memory, theory of mind, and uh, self-awareness let's go for a break and uh when we return we'll continue but meantime let's take a short uh, quiz which university in nigeria had the highest number of full professors in 2021 is it University of Ibadan, that's A, B, Amadou Bello University, Zaria, and C, University of Lagos. 
and the University of Nigeria, so I can suspect that those uh, participants who are from Ibadan will pick this, those from MPU will pick that. Hey, what's the correct answer? The correct answer is D. University of Nigeria, Suka in 2021 had the highest number of full professors as reported by the university. Now, the data uh, are gleaned from Table 17 uh, in the state of university education in Nigeria. So you can see the top 10. UNN, 567, total number. Female, 46, male, sorry, male, 46. Uh, female 161 and it goes all the way. ABU is second, Ibadan is third, Meduguri is next, Benin, and the rest of them. Welcome back from the short break. Let us now uh, look into some more details of the second part of this lesson. That's about types of AI. You know, we started with uh, the classification based on capabilities. And we looked at narrow AI as one of them. Narrow AI is otherwise known as, or like AKA, otherwise known as weak AI or artificial narrow intelligence, ANI. What are narrow AIs? By the way, narrow AI is any AI that you have in the world today, the, February, the uh, 5th day of February 2024, is a weak AI. Hmm. What are narrow AIs? These are AIs, we're talking about capabilities now, that can perform narrowly defined, defined set of specific tasks, like these self-driving vehicles, and uh, most of the AI-based methods built to date fall below the category, or fall within the category of weak AI, as I said before. So that's that way. Uh, let's go on to the next one. So what's the next one? You can recall from that table. The other one is uh, gener general AI. General AI or strong AI. Or artificial general intelligence, AGI. This is where the machine or the non-human entity probably, probably possesses the ability to behave and take decisions like human beings as i said it's only the weak ai that exists at the moment all the others that i've been talking about are speculative they're still the future they are theoretical theoretical none at the moment so we'll be able to generate machines which can be as smart as human beings so strong ai is uh, theory theory and they can take decisions uh, they are classified as ones that are able to take decisions like human beings What's the next one? Oh, yes, you got it right. Super AI or artificial super intelligence, ASI. Now, as I said, this is currently a hypothetical position. And that's what you see in science fiction films, sci-fi films, and books. That's when the computer is able to go beyond, transcend human beings in terms of intelligence application. Super intelligence. That's based on capabilities. Let's we've done the capabilities one. Now let's go to the one on functionalities. Classification based on functionalities. The first classification that we have here is reactive machine. Reactive machine are those that, are, that function based on current data. Uh, this is an example of it. Now this world champion Gary Kasparov was beaten by beaten flat by reactive AI. Okay, chess game, you play this, oh, you anticipate, you play this, and all of that until you checkmate. So, this is an example of a reactive AI. The man is so dumbfounded. Gary Kasparov, dumbfounded. Hey, machine, don't beat me. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the other classification based on functionalities, and that is limited memory, limited memory. Now, uh, the limited memory functionality comes with short-lived, that's why it's limited, or temporary memory that can be utilized to store earlier experiences and they attend to future actions. An example is the self-driving vehicle. They are limited memory AI. So what they do is data collected, oh, human being is passing, oh, and the system is programmed to say, when you see a human being passing, either you stop, or you move to another direction, or there's a car coming, or and the rest of them. They employ data collected 
There are sensors all over. Traffic signs, obstructions, and all they navigate their way through. This is an AI that's limited memory. They are all weak AIs. They are all within. But if you now shift them, they can see some overlap. If you now shift them to a type of capabilities, the limited memory AI is uh, weak. Let's go to theory of the mind. Theory of the mind is still far out there. It's hypothetical. I can see the theory of mind AI is still under development. Uh, it is speculated that it will play an important role in psychological interventions by targeting emotional intelligence and figure out how humans think. This is T-I-N-K, not think. Oh. So that is theory of the mind. What's theory of the mind against the functionality that, uh, that uh, uh, an artificial intelligent being or organism or entity will have that's able to read your mind, play intelligent, type emotional intelligence? That is that. Let's go to the, the next one. Self awareness. Hmm, this one is tough. This is and Elon Musk and Stephen Hawking, they have warned, warned, they have kept conscious. In fact, uh, throughout the last half of, of uh, last year, 2023, oh, this caution. This is a fearful state. When the AI is not functionally aware, we are not there yet. These are still hypothetical uh, postulates. Uh, beyond the weak AI and all of that. So this one's a, this way I become self-aware uh, reach the stage of possible super intelligence. So what I will learn in this lesson, we we'll looked about the vision of AI, the two prior definitions that are provided and the types of AI classifications based on capabilities and functionalities. What will be our next lesson? Lesson number two, will be on the brief history and the future of artificial intelligence. Now, at the end of this week, on Friday, February 9th, this one last thing, you're going to get a warm-up quiz. This is just warm-up because we are starting this course on the 26th, but we are doing some warm-up. And you can, if you participate, you can end 60 months. The months are accumulating. So if you don't do any of this, yes, no problem, but you are going to get weak, AI, mm -mm, weak score at the end. So you better be part of this warm up so that you can. So it's just going to be a 20 item multiple choice test on this lesson. Yeah, on this lesson. You're going to get 20 items so you can watch this video as many times as you can. And it's going to be between uh, 5 and 5.30 uh, on Friday. So uh, we've come to the end. And uh, oh, let me don my, uh, okay, no, 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 no worries my Vic Bay hat. So that's it. Uh, until next lesson, it is uh, bye for me, Peter. Okay, we'll call out.